people asked me that you mentioned about sale of house didn't give us any details i said no i won't give details only janathan can give details in the morning i had made up my mind not to give any details but in trying to say i'm not giving details i gave away, gave away details some details it reminds me of indian punjabi joke there's a guy with a bag in his hands and he says to the other guy in the village if you can guess what's in my bag the eggs are yours <laughs> if you can guess how many all 12 were yours <laughs> the other man says i'm not a psychic or something to guess <laughs> give me some hint <laughs> he said the hint is they are white outside <laughs> and yellow inside he said ah i knew it was this you have hidden some carrots in the radishes <laughs> <laughs> so we we uh, we have sometimes situations like that they say that laughter is the best medicine i agree actually if you want to live life happily you should have a laughter and smile inside your inner self all the time not outside what you should you do outside make the kind of face that is required by circumstances but inside look at the show look how it's arranged look how we come and go look how birth takes place how death takes place and the life is running look how many are living look at the big screen look at the big multi dimensional place we are in watching if you begin to look at the drama of life you will be happy inside to make it easier you can even imagine that you are sitting in a very comfortable chair in your head behind the eyes so that when you open the eyes from that chair you are looking at the world not the chair where you are sitting on that's your body's chair not yours if you can just keep this awareness in mind that you are watching life as a show from a chair on which you are relaxing and sitting and watching by opening your eyes opening your ears listening two main things seeing and hearing most important smelling touching tasting comes later but the first impact is seeing hearing important in our indian scriptures it described as nirat surat nirat power of seeing surat power of listening We, this power of seeing and listening goes way beyond our physical body it lasts while we are here it lasts while we are in the astral plane it lasts while we are in the causal plane it lasts while we are in the spiritual planes it's amazing these two all other disappear these two perceptions of ours never go away and that's the kind of experience that can build up of course the nirat and surat at a certain point become one here they totally separate other sense perceptions join these two at the causal plane but these two become completely one above that but while they are separate is nice to enjoy what is the importance of it the importance is for those people who meditate i am addressing those people who like to meditate and go within through meditation and discover you will find these are the two things most important see and here see what see whatever comes what will come if you just see and concentrate your attention on yourself light color beauty images they'll come automatically hear what sound a very powerful sound which we think are separate light and sound separate 
It's only at a certain point we find the origin is identical same. And they are only spread out for our experience. While they are separate, some people in meditation see light first. They can't hear any particular sounds. They, they say so very faint sounds. Some people hear the sounds, bell ringing inside, long whistling sounds, sound that pull you, sound that can take your attention away. It doesn't matter. Some people say, I hear the sound all the time, never seen light. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. Or I can hear the sound, not, not see the light. I have seen the light. I can't hear the sound. They are coming from the same origin. Both have the power. If you concentrate on the one who is looking at them, both have the power to draw your attention within. Power does not exist in looking at the light. Power does not exist in listening to the sound. Power exists in knowing who is looking at the light. Power exists in who is listening to the sound. These sounds, when you hear, you should see where they come from and you will be amazed that the basic sound which can pull you and not require any other method for withdrawing your attention is a sound resembling a big bell. When you hear, if you hear the sound, you will say, I can hear from here, I can also hear from there. You are putting your attention on something away from yourself. But if you say, am I hearing it? It will become a surround sound, like you are hearing from everywhere. There is a little distinction between merely listening to a sound and listening to the listener of the sound. Being aware of the listener, sound is merely help to discover the listener. Never forget that when we are searching for the ultimate self, when we are searching for the creator of all experiences, it's the self, not the experience, at any time. Therefore, experience is helpful for us. It helps us to discover. We say in our life, I say I met a perfect living master. I was so fascinated by that. What's the significance? Finding a master or discovering how master has come from inside. Gurus tell us, follow us, follow this method. Perfect living masters don't say that. They say, go within yourself and find out. They say the real master is not outside. You are projecting it like everything else. Real master is inside. It takes time to discover that the real master is our real self. No distinction. But we can't see ourselves. So it's a design to discover ourselves. We create a master outside like we create everything else. How is it possible if we are projecting everything from inside? It master somebody different from projection is the same. It's an image we create outside. It's a personality we create outside. And we give the experience of the master knowing more than us and guiding us. The whole thing is happening from within. So it's amazing how the perfect way masters have never said, follow us and come where we are going. Come to the river and we'll take you there. Come to this mountain, we'll take you. Come to our ashram and will take you there. Never. They say, go within yourself. This is the real ashram. This is the real temple. This is the real place of God. This is where God and you both live. And if you find God, you will find you were God. People don't like that idea. I want a God separate from me, whom I can worship, whom I can love. Therefore, well, your wish has been granted. You have been separated from God. Now you can worship him. But you want to know the truth, the real secret? Go in and find. God is also man-made. Let, let anybody go in and reverse my statement and say, no, I saw a separate God. The moment you say you saw a separate God, he can't be God because he's not total. You are separate from him. And God is total. Nothing is outside of it. That's why I use a term which itself is not complete, but I use the term totality of consciousness. Out of 
which nothing exists outside of it. When we go through meditational experiences to these different stages of consciousness and levels of consciousness, we have different experiences, we separate them. I myself am telling you, this physical experience, I may draw attention, become unaware of this, I open up another experience, separate. Physical is separate from astral. I deep, deeper meditation, I go to causal plane, I discover the nature of mind, discover nature of time space, discover the nature of karma, de destinies, how they are made, how they are played out, laws of cause and effect being created there. We see all that, great, separate, separate from the physical, separate from the astral. We go higher up, I found my own self, I am a soul, none of these things, separate. Up to that point, many masters have also said they are separate. Perfect living masters who go beyond that. A very rare event. Very few people have done that. Very few gurus have done that. Because we call even the perfect gurus who bring us to immortality. The ones who take us to discovery of our soul are also perfect living masters. They've taken us beyond time and space, beyond rebirth and beyond the mind. But perfect living masters, very rare. Great master used to say, even in a time when there are more of them, they will never more than, but when he counted on the fingers of your hand, five or eight or something, not more than that, in a whole population of billions. Very rare event, any one of you can be there too, by the way. Any one of you can be one of those five or ten. What do you find when you go there, to your true home? You find the physical was created there, the astral was created there, the causal was created there, souls were created there. There's nothing outside of it. That's totality. Totality does not mean something exists outside of totality. A person who has reached that state, a human being, while he's human and has been able to raise his Consciousness and awareness to that level. What is his experience actually? Is he still saying I am now in this stage or that stage? No. He is experiencing all levels at the same time. A most unusual experience. That you can be at all these levels. No, all are real, all are unreal. All are experienceable as real, all are created as illusions. It's a great experience. That's total experience. Imagine perfect living masters come and appear in the lives of those who are seeking that kind of experience. Real truth. The ultimate truth of the nature of the self, which is total. There's nothing outside of it. This whole show is taking place there. I remember first time I came to the United States, they asked me to speak in a church. And somebody asked me a question. If we were so happy in our true home, why did we leave and come here? My prompt answer without thinking was, we never left it. Which is true. We never left it. We created the experience of leaving still there. If you leave, it no longer remains total, no longer remains our true home. But it is a true home because nothing else exists. We always define God like that. We say God is total. God is everywhere. When we use those terminology, do we realize what we are saying? There is nothing outside of God. If God is everywhere and is total, how can we say I am separate from God? If you are separate, there is no God. Not by that definition. That is why this whole term of God being separate, we have to find him, has been created by us. It's a useful thing to practice love and devotion. It's better if you practice it with a living person. Because God we have not seen. If we see God, some people say we have seen God. I ask them, what did he look like? Just give me a little description. Oh, he was wearing white robes, great shining face, gray hair, 
I said, you're talking an old man, obviously. God has grown very old now. Why are you describing like that just because your mind can imagine that figure? People are imagining all kinds of figures. We give different names to that figure. Different religions are born and they fight each other and kill each other. Just because they form different names, not even images. They don't know the image. If they were to define an image, they'll be very similar. So that is why the truth is something very different. Why I'm saying this is because you are seekers of the truth. That's why I'm sharing all this with you. This whole secret can be revealed completely within you. And the whole thing shows taking place in totality. And nothing is outside of it. And that is our self, true self. That is why when Socrates said, know thyself, he was not talking of know your body. He's talking of the self that includes everything. And these great masters have come and explained it the same way. Of course, it's very interesting. Some people like a journey. They love travel. And travel is available. Inside, a lot of travel is available. Some people enjoy it. If we created this whole thing for a show, travel is a good thing. We like to travel in this physical world. We can travel a lot more see a lot more in the inner worlds. They are very vast worlds, much bigger than this. From an inner state of being, you can travel these worlds also. That's very interesting setup. This is a physical world of matter. There's a world of same perception, same people, same building, maybe many more, maybe few less but with no matter, no molecules and atoms. This has got molecules and atoms. No other difference. But what happens if you have no molecules and atoms, no matter, no physical matter, you become so light, nothing can prevent you from flying anywhere. It's a great experience. So you experience this world and that world in that state. Therefore, we say there is an overlap an overlap between the physical and the astral. Most of us who do meditation, in the beginning, see something similar to this. Sometimes we think, just a good dream I had, but very good dream. I, it was looking more real than this, but it was a dream because I woke up, this was the reality. That looked real while I was dreaming. But when I woke up, this looked real. Because at one time, you only experience one reality unless you are at the top. There you can experience all together. So when you experience one reality, how can you experience this reality? By being at the astral plane. Because a large chunk of that vast astral plane and a smaller physical plane. Now when I use this word large and small, you might ask how large is large and how small is small. This, is, this world is infinite. Now, our mind says nothing can be bigger than that. That is more infinite. Okay? I can use words. If you look in any direction of the physical universe that you're looking at, it's infinite. What does infinite mean? Infinite means you can go on and on forever. Time is infinite. You can keep on thinking of the past, what is there before that time, before that time. What will happen future in time? Time doesn't go away, space doesn't go away, they are infinite. Here we have no concept of a bigger infinity. But I'll tell you how it can be bigger. If all directions of this world, in every direction is infinite, that means the infinity is the border of this world. This becomes a sphere. If all sides are equal, and we are in somewhere in the middle, it has to be a sphere. This physical world is created spherically. Now, if you, hear, if you can see a sphere, no matter how good a sphere, how large a sphere you can imagine right now, in the astral plane, you can imagine a larger sphere. That's why it's a bigger infinity. It's a larger sphere, 
then you can imagine okay now when two spheres are like that in space and time there is a big sphere and there is a smaller sphere and in between they overlap the overlap doesn't look like a sphere overlap looks like this and this as you can imagine putting two thing that can merge in each other they became like a fish they look like a fish in fact the edges look like the um, like the what are they called the end of the fishes you understand so this is a fish like structure which is in space and time working together is the overlap means the astral plane and the physical plane are not at different places identical same place we are sitting in both at this time we can't sit in one and not in the other the self sits in one place now in the overlap during meditation in the overlap you can have experiences of this world and the other world that is why people say when somebody dies physically where does he go we say oh his spirit roams around here 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 where in the physical plane but he is not in physical body he is disembodied physically but he moves in the overlap it's if you see you have to go beyond the overlap to see the overlap but if you see the overlap it's a great place so many million trillions of souls are there they are disembodied they come back in rebirth when we say reincarnation reincarnation does not go mean that you go anywhere higher you are reincarnated in the same place because your desires and attachments are in the same place they are both together so that is why the overlap the big fish is what contain the shape of the fish of infinity is created like that as it happens there is similar overlap between the astral plane and the causal plane you can in that second overlap have experiences of your mind experiences of creation and still be in a sensory state that's possible so that's the second big fish much bigger than this small fish much bigger because there you can go further in your imagination and further in your experience to go see bigger bigger infinity these two fish are a connection connecting our experiences from here right to the top i read in the bible that jesus christ gave two fish to thousands of people who were sitting there and people are thinking he caught some fish from the pond and must have cut them into pieces to give not at all he is referring to these awarenesses people don't understand that he is referring exactly to an inner experiences Those are the two fish he's talking about, not the physical fish that he's cutting up. You can't cut a physical fish and give to many people. So, the experience of the fish, the second fish, which is connecting the astral and the causal, is more interesting because if you if you think of it in terms of the way we think of physical thing, it's not physical, but supposing we are we can imagine a physical place there is a spot in the middle of that overlap where you experience both above and below at the same time it has been mentioned in the scriptures also and they call it the bunk canal the bunk canal which means the crooked tunnel they call it crooked tunnel you might have heard of it is a crooked tunnel between those two why is it called crooked because it's only from the center you can see the astral and from there you can see if you move down you will remain in astral if you move up you go into causal very interesting places some people like it so much some souls are sitting there for a long time in that day. when you have experiences inside it stay long enough you will see so many others who have not dead they are all alive nobody dies really 
It's only change of bodies. So you can see all that inside. I am only referring to all these things so that you should know there is a huge possibility of great experiences, great flights, great travel in all these places. If you are interested in some of the sensory things that you enjoy here, you will enjoy them more at the astral plane. There are millions of souls who are thinking that is their true home just because they can satisfy their desires in a different way at that level. Even great master disciples, great master used to say that many have got so much interest in the things here that even when he is guided to go up, they remain stuck there. After initiation, after having the ability to go further up, they can spend a thousand, two thousand physical years in the astral plane. The only good thing about initiation from a perfect living master is that the master remains with you no matter where you are. Once you have crossed the physical experiences and the overlap period, some part of the overlap, and the master can be seen inside, that master never disappears. So you always have guidance and companionship. Loneliness disappears completely. A person who has manifested what we call the radiant form of his master or her master is never lonely again. You can't be alone. One old lady said to me in the Dera long ago, she said, Master is always with me. I said, that's a good thing. No, not when I go to my bathroom. <laughs> I then tell him, please stay out. I mean, jokes like that. She was a very good uh, disciple, a strangy lady. So, the presence of Master never leaves you. If you see him in meditation, you can, after a while, see him even outside, everywhere. You can drive your car and you feel Master sitting next to you. So, turn the corner of your eye, he's there. Like he physically you look. Looks absolutely physical, like he was. Amazing experiences. He can be separate. He can be lo looking at you from front. He can give the appearances on the side. He can also give you the experiences behind you. And most importantly, he can give you the experience he is entirely in you. That he and you are the same. He can give that experience. Now, I am not talking of the ultimate he give that experience even halfway around. So these are great possibilities. You are seekers of the ultimate. You have great chance for having this. All we need is to be less interested in what is around here. Less interested as seekers. Enjoy it. I am not saying don't enjoy this world. I say enjoy more by taking it like a show. Enjoy this world, be happy, enjoy everything here, keep your basic attention inside to what is lying inside you. Basic attention on your own self. The discovery of the truth is not discovering anything outside, anything anywhere, except within your own self. So, this is what I wanted to share with you. I'm very happy you could all come. And uh, somebody told me there may be nobody here today because the meditation workshop is coming up in two, two weeks in uh, Wisconsin. But I'm very happy all of you decided to come here. Some of, you, some of you I might see in Wisconsin also. Thank you very much. I'll see you again. Is it next month? One week. Not two weeks. One week. <laughs> they told me. They changed it on us. It was two weeks, but it's going to be next week. Next week? Yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much. <laughs>